Hello everybody, how are we? Welcome, if someone could give me a heads up on the sound please, that would be good. Um, I have an additional camera today and I just want to make sure that we're not getting any interference on the sound. <coughs> not got any comments at the moment, I'll just refresh the chat. go chats appeared disappeared appeared so I shall carry on hi Ian thank you mate all good brilliant so spring is definitely here isn't it looking at the garden all the daffodils out and what have you and it's definitely warmed up. It's been very windy here though, really windy. And um, quite a bit of rain as well, overnight. So we had a trip out today, went to a garden centre, something Julie does every year. And she manages to get lots and lots of free uh, daffodils, etc. That was the car on the way back. <laughs> completely full of free plants and at this time of the year they're throwing them out they don't want them so um, yeah might be worth popping down to your nearest garden centre seeing if we've got anything they don't want and because we had such a good deal we bought some garden canes eight foot canes and they're a good three quarter inch thick for 50p each so pleased with that they'll um, be great for climbing beans and tomatoes and stuff later in the up a slug can today we've got an experiment going if it works I've been having a few problems with it so I'll just click on it now and see and nope not working so I will just quickly sign out of that and sign back in because I've got a little experiment running here where we've got some copper and some eggshells to see if the slugs will cross them. So I'll just get back into this. Pull out. Mute. Right, let me see if that works now. It's been working great all the time. Hang on a minute. Here we go. Can everybody see that? So what we have is lane one, two and three and there's two grey field slugs on each of the three bricks nearest the camera and at the back of the uh, plastic tray is another brick with a pea plant on it. All the bricks are surrounded with water and lane one the bridge to get to the pea plant is surrounded with eggshells. Lane two is just a piece of wood, so that shouldn't cause them any problems. And lane three is a piece of copper pipe. People claim that copper pipe or copper electrocutes the slugs, so we will see. At the moment, they've all disappeared down the sides of the bricks, but they're going to have to come back up because the bricks are surrounded by water. So as and when something develops on the slug experiment, I will bring you back and we'll have a look. So what has everybody been up to this week in the garden? Have you been uh, doing some good stuff? Because it's that time of year now where we're gonna start looking at planting things out, isn't it? So the slugs are going to be a real issue. And even on a few of the things I've planted out already, I'm getting some slug damage. So on some of the peas, the monge too, they're, they're nibbling away at those. I've lost a couple of plants. Um, and I've seen them having a bit of a go at the rhubarb as well. Not much, but a bit. And they normally leave the rhubarb alone. So the biggest slugs that I have a problem with um, grey field slugs 
these little buggers here and they're not very big and what they do is they hide under the leaves under the the bricks or timber or anything that you've got around your plants and then they come out on a night and munch away at your crops so they're the biggest problem that I have and I tend to combat them with beer traps mainly I find beer traps the most effective way of dealing with slugs although you can catch other things and good slugs as well that is the only downside to them but they are very very effective so I don't know if you guys are leaving any comments but we're not getting them at this end so let me refresh the chat uh, definitely slow tonight on the chat on the uh, there we go Danny boy saying I'm getting slug damage on my cauliflower and broccoli even though I have slug traps all over the place it's the problem that you can never get rid of them all they, they just multiply so quickly um, warm weather as well that's the problem you know it's been fairly warm hasn't it we haven't had a really cold spring and therefore they can multiply quite quickly a lot of it i find is down to habitat um, it's like things like having your compost bays near the the beds which i have you know i don't have a lot of choice but they're gonna live in those compost bays or anything that you've got you know piles of timber or bricks or anything and they're, they're going to multiply in that area so the further away you can put compost bays and material stores from your growing area the better yeah it is Danny it's too wet as well obviously slugs love wet conditions don't they so at the moment on the slug camp nothing really happening at the moment they're all wandering around going the wrong way um, so another problem slug I have is the keeled slug and I've got a picture of it somewhere I thought I had a picture of it but the keeled slug is the one that lives under the ground so they're the ones that are going to attack your potatoes um, maybe even parsnips radishes those sort of things and they're subterranean so they rarely come up and they eat what is underneath the ground roots etc so they're a real problem and harder to find as well you know the grey field slugs you can go out with a torch on the night um, and find them fairly easily whereas the the keeled slugs because they're subterranean much harder to find and beer traps are quite effective for getting those when they come up um, has anyone tried nema slug i've never tried it and i've heard it's very good but when i look at it the price puts me off and the fact that you really should reapply it and my understanding of it is it's a parasite that you water into the ground and that attacks the slugs and kills them so it's, it's something I've considered but I've never actually used it and um, I believe you can make your own if you get a bucket of water get a large leaf collect up lots of slugs from your garden put them on the leaf and float them in the bucket of water they will slowly eat the leaf away and in the process they will all mingle together and touch each other and as they eat the leaf they all fall into the water and drown and that parasite is then in the water so you let that ferment and then you can water that onto your garden and it's something I'm, I'm seriously considering doing as, as well as 
the bear traps to try and get on top of them. Let's have a quick look at the slug cam. So we've got one over there by the copper pipe. He's heading in the right direction now. And all the others have gone around down the sides of the bricks at the moment. So we shall see. We'll see. I'd like to see one cross the copper pipe to blow that theory um, out of the water. Because I've tried copper around plants. I've tried copper mesh. I've tried copper tape. And it doesn't seem to work from my experience. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying in my experience it doesn't work. And in my sort of theory as an engineer by trade you would need two pieces of copper with a current running through them so that when the slug crosses the two then it gets a shock but if you start to try and do that in the garden with two bits of copper tape or two bits of copper wire and you connect them to a battery then you're going to have problems with shorting out in wet weather and all kinds of problems so it'll be interesting we'll see we'll see what happens if if the slug gets on the copper or not so another um, common problem in the garden is is the common garden slug and this thing will eat pretty much all your plants it's not fussy and it's always the the more delicate stuff, the brassicas, the lettuce, stuff like that, that they really enjoy. And I've got some little tiny carrot seedlings starting to come through now. And I'm expecting to go down one morning and find that they've all been wiped out because there's a slug come along and taken them. Um, and you've also got the black slug. And these things are omnivores. They'll eat pretty much anything, including feces, carrion. Um, that can be a real issue. Oh, fortunately, I don't seem to have these in the garden. Quite often, they'll be eating decomposing material, compost heaps, things like that. Danny, my main slugs are little black slugs don't know what they're called they could just be young young black slugs I mean those black slugs that I just put a picture up they can grow up to about eight inches in length um, and some of the keeled slugs look very similar they're um, similar color and uh, they can be quite small as well living under the ground eating potatoes and what have you Um, so, beer traps, the way I set my beer traps up, I just use a yoghurt pot or a plastic cup, anything like that, put it flush with the ground, so the top of it is flush with the ground, put about an inch or so of beer in the bottom, and then I prop a roof tile up, so it's just an inch or so for the slugs to get underneath it, and they go in there, and drowned. The roof tile is purely there just to prevent the beer getting diluted with all the rainwater that we're getting. And you know it's the perfect conditions at the moment for slugs. It's wet and it's fairly warm and it, it but it isn't really hot because they don't like the heat. Um, you know you don't you don't see them out on a sunny day so that's at the moment it's the perfect conditions for them and it's the time of year where anything that you plant out because there's so little around for them to eat it's that time of year where they're just going to go for anything that you put out there so it's a good idea if you haven't done so already to try and get slug traps out beer traps you can use yeast you don't have to use beer um, 
any any control methods that you can use get them out there hi Eric how you doing how are you combating the slugs Eric what's your strategy for slug control um, and then Spanish slugs now these things they they just go mad they will eat everything and I had these in a garden um, before we lived here and they are horrendous they they go through crops like there's no tomorrow obviously they're not native to the UK and they breed very very quickly and eat like mad and they're not fussy what they eat they will eat anything so if you got these in your garden then try to control them because they are a real problem and I lived in Spain for quite a few years and when I came back I came back with a van and a trailer with tools and, and stuff like that and I suspect I could have even brought some back with me and they took over the garden they were an absolute nightmare hi Michelle how are you hope you're well what's your slug control methods Michelle so let's have a quick look at the slug cam slug cam where is it I've lost it now on my menu here we go They are all down the side of the bricks. Not one of them yet has tried to cross a bridge. So for those of you that have just joined us, we've got crushed up eggshell here around this bridge. This is just a piece of wood. And that one over there is a piece of copper pipe. And what we're trying to, trying to get the slugs to do is tackle some of these obstacles but um, at the moment they've all gone down the side of the bricks Eric salt does that cause a problem with your plants Eric when you do you put the salt around your plants or are you actually putting it directly on the slugs so you, you're sort of hunting the slugs because I hunt them uh, with a torch and a pair of scissors, that's how I do it. Um, and you can always find them under pots and whatever you can't you? But I try to go out on a, when it's dusk and find them around the plants if I can. Uh, and just give them a snip. Some people would say it's cruel but you know, we've got a hell of a lot of <coughs> organic matter down in the veg plot. And if you don't keep them in check, they will just take over. Michelle's saying frogs. Yeah, we're going to build a pond, Michelle, at some point. Um, it's just time, time and budget, I'm afraid, at the moment. But we are going to build a pond, uh, probably roughly in the centre of the garden, and then they can the frogs and toads and that can go everywhere. Michelle was saying in nature pond over the last few years I've noticed the difference. Yeah. And when we were kids we'd go find the frog spawn and you'd put it in your pond at home. And because they hatch, the frogs hatch there as tadpoles, I believe they come back every year, don't they, to mate. So that's the way to do it, is build a pond, get some frog spawn, put it in there, and then they should come back every year and, and spawn. Ian McLaren, slug can, they don't like the light. Yeah, that's why, Ian, I'll just go back onto it. That's why I've set up the tea towel at this end to try and make this a bit more shaded um, with the pea plant in there. But as yet, they're not, they're not falling for it. Yeah, 
they're not falling for it. Where's my... We've lost the normal camera now. Just bear with me guys. Spring. No. Right, just hold on. I will... Try and get this camera working again. There we go. There was their slug cam. What can you guys see right now? Because my software is telling me I am on the webcam, so you should be able to see me. But on my screen, we are on slug cam. There we go. That's better. Technology. It's a nightmare. So, Eric's saying he puts it directly on the slugs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it'd do your plants much good if you were to put it around the plants. Uh, Boris Johnson, yeah, ducks are good. <laughs> yep, ducks are good, but they also destroy your vegetables, I think, don't they? Ian McLaren, I use deep beds with copper tape and salt on the ground on the outside of the beds. They still munch my veggies. Do you find the copper does anything, Ian? I, I've always found it not to do a thing. Not doesn't do a thing but um, Michelle because I have a woodland area and natural springs if you build it they will come the frog comes yearly yeah so if you've got that habitat around your garden then you've, you've probably got a lot of natural predators already for the slugs haven't you in the area so yeah No, they're still down the side of the bricks. I think the experiment could be a complete failure, guys, but we'll give it some time. We'll give it some time. Now, of course, not all slugs are bad. Um, leopard slugs are a friend to the gardener. They eat other slugs and snails and their eggs. They will also eat worms um, as well. And I actually found one of these yesterday when I was planting up the potatoes. And um, yeah, they're good, good to have around. So if you see one of these, put them somewhere where there's likely to be other slugs, problem slugs, and it will help you get rid of them. So the problem with using beer traps is those you can also catch these slugs the leopard slugs so that can be a problem and it looks as though we're stuck on this picture we're struggling with the old technology tonight guys I am sorry so Leanne's saying I'm happy my flock of chickens will take care of some of the slugs so my population seems reduced. I also use copper mesh around the base of the brassicas and corn. It's really a physical barrier though. Yeah, I, I um, tried copper mesh last year around the brassicas and it didn't really seem to do anything. And I'm, I'm not gonna bother with it this year, but um, yeah, it didn't didn't seem to do a lot, and I think that unless you sort of bury it into the ground as well, they could go under it, couldn't they? So, yeah, Michelle, yeah, the back of the garden is a natural woodland, and at the bottom of our street we have a large woodland. All right, so you must have frogs and toads and all that sort of stuff everywhere. So. 
yeah, having a pond in your garden is just attracting them even more, isn't it? So, fantastic. We've definitely got to build a pond. We've got to get the house finished first and some other garden, but it's on the list. We were talking about it the other day, actually. And if you know, we've got like a really steep bank down from the house to the, the lawn area. So we were thinking we could utilise that bank and build it into sort of a waterfall and then down into a nature pond. Um, so that's the plan, but it's a way off yet. Um, Leanne, and would argue the copper mesh is only about 75% effective, but slows them down only. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anything really other than physically killing the slug that is going to prevent them getting to your plant. Nothing sensible anyway, you know, nothing that is feasible and economic and good for the garden. So I don't think you're ever going to stop them fully. It's about reducing their numbers, especially at this time of the year in the spring. Because if we let them get out of control now, they're going to decimate the crops later in the year. Eric, Jason, have your artichoke come up? One of mine has. Not yet, no. I was having a look this morning. I've got nothing coming up yet. Um, but I'm okay with that because we're still two weeks-ish from our last frost date. 20th of April I think is our average last frost date so I'm happy for things not to come up just yet I have noticed today though that some of the early potatoes are coming up some of the lady crystal so I've got to keep my eye on the weather and then if we are going to drop cold get out there and cover them get some fleece on them Michelle Welsh, they open scare me when I'm with oh, the frogs, frogs and toads and stuff. <laughs> yeah, they can jump out on you, can't they? Uh, and one of my neighbours is scared of them and gets... Hang on, I can't see the comment because there's an icon in the way and gets me to get them out of her garden. <laughs> yeah, get them out of her garden, put them in yours. Yeah, I wish we could have, we used to have a hedgehog and we'd see it quite often. We'd, we'd be sat down in the garden having a campfire or whatever and we'd, we'd see it or hear it snuffing around. But since they've been doing all the building work, we haven't seen it. So I'm afraid it's probably moved on somewhere much quieter than where we are. Ian, I use cut down plastic bottles to protect newly planted until they are well established. Yeah, half pot bottles and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I do that as well. Um, especially over parsnips and things early in the year when they're really small. Yeah, anything you can do to protect them. Has anyone tried this? I can't remember the name of it now. It's the, um, it's like a cotton wool and when it gets wet it it fluffs up and it's meant to deter the slugs I can't remember what it's called um, I've never tried it the idea sounds good but I don't know if it works so if anyone's got any experience of that then let me know Michelle got so much frog spawn are they st is it still there now is it I thought they'd perhaps finished now perhaps hatching into tadpoles I suppose it depends where you are what part of the country and temperatures I thought it was sort of March time yeah, I suppose yeah it could still be there yeah. yeah it's a long time since I've collected frog spawn yeah so environment I think the first thing when it comes to tackling slugs is, is trying to reduce their habitat. So keeping everything as clean and tidy as you can so there's no debris and you know piles of wood and 
rubble and bricks and rotting vegetation, stuff like that. Try and keep it all as tidy as possible so that they haven't got the habitat. Michelle, oh, you've heard of it. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called now. It's it's like it's 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 like a, a, a wool that you put on the beds around your plants and when it gets wet it fluffs up. Danny boy, white vinegar. Okay, that's uh yeah. I can imagine they wouldn't like it. So what I suppose you've got to actually put that on the slug itself though, haven't you? A bit like salt. Um, yeah, I, I just use the scissors and uh, that's it, they're not coming back then, but some people would say that's probably a bit cruel, I don't know. So um, has anyone got any of these Spanish slugs? I'm not certain if these things are actually a reportable thing now do we have to report these if we see them in our gardens because they're not native and i know they're causing a lot of damage um, so should we be reporting them that's something that i'm not certain on i haven't seen any here in this garden but um, we certainly had them in our last garden. So Danny say, oh, Leanne, I put some vinegar in the water when I wash my lettuce in case of slugs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, slugs can carry quite a few parasites that aren't good for humans. There's been a few people that have even died, isn't there? Um, I know they can carry rat longworm. So, the slugs go on the rat feces and then they pick up the parasite and then you pick up a slug, you put your fingers in your mouth or you eat some food or whatever it is and then you can get that parasite and I think it affects your brain and, and other things and there have been some fatalities so if you're ever handling slugs then make sure you wash your hands or wear gloves or whatever. Um, so Danny Boy's saying yeah in a spray bottle for the vinegar or go around and put the slugs in a pot with the vinegar okay okay I must have down the garden now I must have 20 slug pots I would say and um, they've all got slugs in them I, I put them out a good six eight weeks ago and uh, they've been catching slugs ever since. And the other thing with your compost, if you, especially if you make your own compost, it's more than likely got slugs in it and slug eggs. And then you go throw it on your beds, because it's good for the plants, obviously. But what you're actually doing is spreading the slugs around as well. So if you get those slug pots out early, before you start planting stuff out, you are at least helping to reduce the number before you put your baby plants out. Um, Michelle Welsh, as far as I know, mine are field slugs, dark brown, is that correct? They can come in various shades of browny grey. We have ones looking like this. So that's a field slug, grey field slug. But they can be a more sort of brown colour as well. And they cause so much damage. They're not very big, but there's a lot of them. And you can turn a leaf over on a brassicus or something and there's, there could be five or six on there. So they do cause a lot of damage. And I think for, for us here, they're the ones that cause the most damage. Um, like I say, we don't seem to have the black slug and we don't seem to have many of the common garden slug either. It's the field slugs. And they apparently are predominant where the ground has been cultivated. So 
if it's been a garden for years or an allotment for years or something like that then yeah you've probably got grey field slugs um, hi Vaughn how are you Eric dogs can get long worm if they eat them right okay and I guess that'd be fatal would it Eric for the dog as well it's definitely not a nice disease this uh, long worm rat long worm I've, I've seen a few things on the news where I think there was one in America not that long ago where a guy died. I think he ate a slug for a bet, him and his mate. And um, I think he died. So we'll have a quick look at slug cam. No, we won't. It's not working. I think we'll give up on slug cam. I shall just give you a, a commentary if anything's happening. But at present... None of them are attempting to cross any of the bridges. So I think we've got a bit of a failed experiment there. And I think um, you're right, Ian. It's because it's too light and they're hiding down the side of the bricks. But obviously, if I was to make it dark, we wouldn't be able to see it. So <laughs> Eric saying, yes, it can be fatal for the dogs. It's not good, is it? And rats are a big problem. Um, we we have had rats here, but I think they've gone with all the building work. But it's always a worry because they get they're in and out of your compost, and then you the slugs are there as well, and then you're working in the garden. And you've probably noticed on my videos I don't often wear gloves um, when I'm planting stuff and things like that, and I probably should, but. It's just habit, you know. I've been gardening for 20 years and you just don't wear gloves. I tend to wear gloves if I'm doing stuff that's uh, heavy work on my hands. So, you know, lifting slabs or digging or something like that. But if I'm just planting things, I don't really wear gloves. And probably should do. Just as an extra layer of protection. So any has anyone else got any... Um, other forms of slug control so we've talked about salt vinegar copper um, beer traps and nematodes nemaslug and things like that the parasites has anyone got any other suggestions that would work that they've tried they've got experience of that are worth giving a go if you've really got a problem with slugs Obviously attracting natural predators is the best one if you can so frogs and toads and newts and that sort of stuff but is there anything else out there that people have tried that's worked? Obviously you can get the pellets can't you but that's not something that I, I use because they can harm other wildlife so Certainly if you've got hedgehogs around and you're poisoning the slugs and then the hedgehogs eat in the slugs, that's it's not good. So I don't use them. We don't use them anywhere in the garden. Not just the veg plot, we don't use them anywhere. Because um, we don't want to harm other wildlife. Michelle Welsh, don't start with the rats. They drive me nuts because of the woodland it's hard to keep them out of the garden yeah but I suppose you know at least they're not um, like city rats are they they're um, you know field rats I guess you'd call them would you you know so they're perhaps not carrying so many diseases as they would in a city you know they're not down the sewers and stuff like that was it in London now? I don't think you're ever more than, was it six feet or seven feet or something like that from a rat? So, yeah, not good. So, other than hunting slugs, beer traps are my favourite because they're working all the time. When I'm not in the garden, they're working. And they're not harming 
much other than the slugs. You do catch the odd spider and beetle, things like that. But predominantly it's slugs that end up in the traps from what I've seen. And all I do is I tip those out and I put them, I actually put them on the compost heap. And give the pots a swill out and then top them back up with an inch or so of beer. Because I find if you just leave it to just congeal further and further, it stinks. It really does stink. Um, and you end up with a like a thick crust that you have to break through. Michelle, cut up fresh chilies, fine chopped in hot water, cooled, then put in a spray bowl. I've used that before. Okay. So are you spraying that directly on the slugs, Michelle? Or are you spraying that around your plants or on your plants? How are you, how are you applying that? I've not heard of that one before. So that could be something. We've got half a drawer of chilies in the freezer. That could be something I could try. So Yvonne's saying bear traps. Yeah, they, they just work, don't they? They do, they just work. And they're working all the time. That's the thing with them. You know, you don't have to be there. You don't have to be spraying the slugs or putting something on them or snipping them with the scissors. Michelle, okay, so yeah, so you, you spray it on the slugs. So your chili, chili treatment, you spray directly on them. Okay. So there's something, I didn't know that. I didn't know that that, um, so I take it that actually kills them then, does it? Or does it, I don't know, yeah, it must do, it must do. Salt I don't tend to use because if I've already found a slug, then I'll kill it. Um, and I suppose if you put the salt on it, what you're really doing is killing it anyway, aren't you? So I, I tend to just dispatch them there and then. Um, so there's a few in there that nobody's getting out alive. Do you know what I mean? They're all field slugs. One of them is now coming up back onto the top of the brick and heading towards the bridge on lane two, the uh, just the plain piece of wood. So, Eric's saying, I'll try that with some of my demon chilies. <laughs> yeah, that'll get rid of them. I'll definitely get rid of them. I wonder what would happen if you if they were on the plant. So let's say you've got a brassicas plant, it's got field slugs on it, and you spray the slugs on the plant with that chili mix. Will it just harm the slugs or is it going to harm the plant as well? Because sometimes, especially on things like brassicas, there can be so many on a plant and they're down in the little nooks and crannies where the leaves come out of the stem and, and things like that. So that could be a good uh, strategy for getting the really small ones that are on the plant that you can't necessarily pick off. Um, Michelle, Eric, it's the large ones that get the chili spray. Okay, so when you say large slugs, Michelle, what are you? What sort of slugs are they? Just field slugs, because field slugs, grey field slugs, get up to about sort of seven centimeters ish, that sort of length. Um, the the really big, you know, six inch, eight inch slugs are generally the black ones, or the Spanish slugs, the bright orange, um, they get up to about eight inches in length. And um, the leopard slugs, the leopard slugs can get pretty big as well. Michelle, I tend to pick them off the plants and spray. Right, okay. I'd like something that we could spray onto the plant with them on it 
so pick off the big ones that you can see and then any that are down in the little nooks and crannies where the leaves come out the stems and stuff you could spray something on them that doesn't harm the plant Michelle these are big dark slugs hmm they're like a brownie color I wonder if they're the common garden slug but just big ones something like that and um, yeah they can do a lot of damage they can do a lot of damage it's like I say especially with things like lettuce and carrot seedlings I mean you can have a whole row of carrot seedlings come up and the next morning they're gone they just they love carrot seedlings for some reason Yvonne, snails are very greedy. Don't suffer with snails too much. We have very, very few snails here. We've got a few knocking about in the greenhouse, but um, don't really seem to suffer with snails. It's all, it's nearly all slugs that we have a problem with. But I'm, I don't know the um, scientific difference really between a slug and a snail. Isn't a snail just a slug with a shell? I don't know. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure there's a bit more to it than that. But um, they must like slightly different habitats because we haven't got very many snails here at all. You'd struggle to go in the garden and find a snail. Yeah, I went out earlier and picked up six or seven field slugs in about five minutes. I literally just turned a couple of bricks over and found them and that was it. Danny boy, garlic water. If you want something to spray on the plants, they use it for the hostas. Need spray again after rain though. Okay. Okay. So just some cloves of garlic, soak them in water and spray the plant. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make myself up a little spray bottle, I think. And then physically pick off the slugs that I can get to use my beer traps and spray garlic water on the young plants because it's getting those little tiny ones that you can't see or the ones that are down in the, the crevices because they, they they do so much damage they you, a tiny little slug can just cause havoc with a young plant Eric, sometimes get my tennis racket on. <laughs> wow, how big are the slugs, Eric? That's 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 quite a severe, <laughs> severe math. That's some big old slugs they are. Michelle Welsh mainly gets snails in the front garden. They like the elephant ears. Okay. I don't know what elephant ears are. I'm assuming that's some kind of ornamental plant is it I'm guessing <laughs> tennis racket is that so you could knock them over the fence in the you know somebody else's garden or Yvonne got loads of snails more than slugs weird they don't seem to be bothered about beer come to think of it I don't think I've ever caught a snail in a bear trap. Now you say that. I don't think I ever have. And I'm sure in the 15 or 20 years that I've been using bear traps, I would have caught one. But yeah, come to think of it, I don't think I've ever caught a snail in a bear trap. So there, there must be some differences, preferences for the snails and the slugs they must like different habitat or slightly different habitat and and i don't know danny boy the worst is when they chop the stem off the plant yeah i've got two pea plants down the bottom and that's exactly what they've done they haven't just took the leaves they've cut the plant off and it's well that that's part of it. 
it's so annoying you know if they took a few leaves you can kind of live with that because the plant can carry on but when they cut it off it's just Eric's yep you should see them flying across the field <laughs> with a with a like cross pattern on them yeah from the strings off the racket Michelle I don't know the proper name for them big green leaves and pink flowers the first thing that flowers in the spring okay apparently hostas slugs love hostas don't they Perhaps I should plant some hostas down near the brassicas so that that's you know, like sacrificial planting so that the slugs go for them and not not the cauliflower and calabrese and what have you yeah we could have a slug slug whacking competition we'll get our tennis rackets out <laughs> Yeah, it's frustrating. It really is frustrating when you've you've grown some plants from seed, and you've put them out, and they just get decimated. And I've really made a conscious effort this year to get those slug pots out as early as I could. They've, like I said, they've been out for a good six weeks now, and I've probably retopped them twice in that time. Top them up, cleaned them out, top them up, and. I am catching loads and loads of slugs, mainly field slugs, grey field slugs. And they're the ones that I have the biggest issue with. So, um, And like I said earlier, for people that have come along recently, if you see these guys, the leopard slugs, don't kill those. They're the good guys. They will eat other slugs and their eggs and snails apparently so if you see these put them somewhere nice and safe compost heap is a good place because there's going to be other slugs in there and um, it, it will help you it will do you a favor it's the gardener's friend Michelle I have a metal spike in the greenhouse that I use to sling them over the field <laughs> You know, and I got criticised on a live, the other, was it the other day? Not criticised, it was only fun. But somebody said, I can't remember who it was now, but somebody said I was a mean man because I go out hunting them on a night with a torch and scissors. And then there's you lot using tennis rackets and metal spikes, you know? I mean, <laughs> they've got to be got rid of. If you were to not control the population of slugs in your garden or your allotment then uh, you're not going to have any crops it's as simple as that they're going to multiply and multiply and multiply so you've got to do something you're never going to get rid of them all you're never going to kill every single slug it's just not going to happen so under pots is a good one anywhere where it's shady and damp that's where they're going to be and that's where you go hunting for them so bricks and bits of wood etc Michelle yeah scissors I find it just so easy you don't even have to just cut them in half you can just snip them and that's enough um, Danny boy to be honest no slug is good I've seen leopard slugs eating worms that is true, they will eat uh, earthworms, yeah, they will. But I've got so many worms in the garden that I'm happy for the leopard slugs to stay based on the fact that they eat other slugs. Um, I mean, I lift up, lifted up a bag of compost today and it was on the slabs on the path and there were so many worms under it. It's just insane, the amount of worms that we've got. Leanne, yeah, I'm a mean person too, I guess. The side of a trail also does the job. Yeah, it does, yeah, I do that. <laughs> yeah. We got memories. For every slug that you kill, <laughs> I 
I think there's something, I, I think slugs can lay up to about 600 eggs in their lifetime. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's a number that sticks in my mind. Now, I don't know how long slugs live, but it's probably not that long. So, they're laying 600 eggs. So, you, by getting rid of one, you've severely hampered the population, haven't you? Eric, I got them in my greenhouse. I did not know they are the good ones. Yeah, leopard slugs are good. And if they're in the greenhouse, they're probably in there because there's other slugs in there that they eat. Yeah, so the, the leopard slug. Some people call them, call them um, tiger slug as well. But I, when I find them, I tend to put them either by the rhubarb because that's not something that I'm going to go digging around really or I'll put them in the compost heap because there's always slugs in the compost heap. Michelle, it's a gardener's nightmare. It's a no-win problem. It is. And there was something on Sky News, wasn't there, a few weeks back about we should all befriend the slug and that they do a lot of good in the environment and things like that. And they do. They, you know, they eat decaying matter uh, and what have you. But when you're in a really concentrated area, like a vegetable plot or an allotment, and you're trying to grow food, you can't, you can't let them get out of control. Danny Boy, I posted on a Facebook group last week about using yeast traps. I was hung, drawn, and caught. <laughs> really. Yet for years, in some of these Facebook groups, It can be very clicky, I think. They can be very sort of, um, they're either sort of very traditional where no dig is a taboo subject and, uh, you know, all it's all traditional methods and so anything new is, is just poo-pooed straight away. Uh, and a lot of them are full of people that haven't, necessarily they like the idea of growing food and it's all very green but they may not do it on a scale where they're trying to feed the family or whatever and then so when there are pests and people talk about getting rid of pests they uh, they, they 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 what they think is they can grow the lettuce alongside the slugs and the slugs all live happily alongside the lettuce and that is, it's, we all know that that's not going to happen. Danny boy, some people like the info, but bloody hell, won't do it again. I post some of my videos on a Facebook page, and um, I'd say 9.9 .9 times out of 10, that I don't get any negative feedback occasionally. That is the way it is, isn't it? That's, that's social media for you. Um, Michelle Welsh. Yeast traps are just as effective as beer traps. The slugs just don't get drunk. <laughs> well, I think it's the yeast that they go after in the beer anyway, isn't it? I think, I think it's just... You know, I've got millions of slugs down the garden. I'm never going to get rid of them all. So, yeah, I've got to do what I can. And it will probably get easier for us as we tidy the garden up as well, as we get rid of some of the, the timber that we've got lying around and some of the bricks, you know, all that. Everything starts to find a home and gets put in place. Then the habitat will decrease for the slugs. You can't please them all, Danny boy. No, you can't. You can't. So a good source of beer, if you've got a pub near you, is to go and ask for the slops. See if they'll let you have the slops. And uh, just use that in your beer traps. Save you buying it. That's what I think I'm going to do. There's a pub not far away. I might go in there, have a couple of pints and say, can I have the slops? 
if they're allowed to do that now, I suppose there's probably some law that says you can't give the slops away, I don't know. But <clears throat> yeah, yeah, the yeast, yeah. So guys, we're approaching the hour. If any of you have got a YouTube channel or an Instagram page, whatever, put it down in the comments so people can come along and have a look, see what you're up to. Um, there's nothing happening on slug cam. That was a complete failure. And do you know what, guys? I flooded the kitchen once setting this up. As you saw earlier, the tray is, is in a compost bag. <laughs> it wasn't to start with. I filled the tray up. It had a hole in it. So the, the kitchen's got water all over it. So then we put it in the uh, compost bag. And I think it is still leaking a little bit. But it was worth a try. It was worth a try. The problem is, I think you're right, Ian. Totally right. There's too much light here. And the slugs are hiding down the side of the brick. But um, maybe try it again at some point. So guys, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I will come up with a subject for next Sunday's live. Or if you have any suggestions, then put them in the comment section of this live, what you'd like to discuss. And uh, I'll put a live out for next Sunday. Michelle, I bet Julie was happy. To be fair, at the moment, I'm getting away with some stuff, aren't I? Because I'm incapacitated. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Normal circumstances, probably not. But this is only the temporary kitchen. It's only a makeshift thing at the moment while we finish the proper kitchen. But, uh, so there's, there's nothing on the floor. It's just a concrete floor. You know, it's not like... I've caused any damage but be surprised how much, wa much water is in one of these trays when you fill it up and it's got a tiny little pinhole and it, it comes out very slowly yeah so thank you very much guys I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and I've learnt a couple of things as well garlic water and chilli water and all of that sort of stuff so I will be trying those out and thank you very much for coming along and joining in. And I shall see you hopefully next week on 